What is up everybody welcome back to another video in today's video we are back with another preview slash prediction video and today we are here with a big matchup it's Lions it's Chargers so let's get it started welcome everybody to another video glad you guys are here and yes I'm excited to be back now this is like the 10th time I've done this intro so y'all didn't need to know that but I'm just saying that it's weird I don't know it's just weird being back man it's been so long since we've done a video like this I have to get back into the flow of things but I am very excited for this game because it's a big one you're talking about the Chargers team with a ton of talent that every week when we do our weekly picks on Bleach Report I struggle to pick against the Chargers because of what they have talent wise and now Maybe they started to put it together a little bit. They're starting to win some games. And when you watch them offensively and defensively, you see a lot of things that you like. You flip it over to the Lions side. We're going on the road. It's a 4 p.m. Eastern start. It's a little bit strange. But we're also coming off that bye week. We've also acquired Donovan Peoples-Jones. And maybe most importantly... We're getting healthy. So let's start there first. We're going to start with the injury report, and then we're going to get into the preview slash prediction side. At the very end, I'll give you my score prediction if you're new. You're probably not. You know this. You know the drill. But what I'm really excited about for this video is my players to watch. So stay tuned for that. But let's start with the injury report first. Now, Chargers put up a little funny clip on their X account. Wow! Because they're healthy. And if you look at their injury report, they only have three players listed. Joey Bosa popped up on Thursday with illness, but he's going to play. Justin Herbert, really the key there for Herbert is he's actually getting healthier. He's had to deal with a hand injury, which has made it weird in terms of how he wants to take the snap. You can see that it's something he's dealt with. Even on handoffs, he'll hand it off with his right hand instead of his left hand. That's the point that I'm trying to make. So the key there is he's getting healthier, but he's going to play. And then also Michael Davis, who popped up on Friday with, did not participate due to illness. He's one of their top outside cornerbacks he's also going to play in this game so for the most part they're healthy where their key injuries start to kind of come into play is on injury reserve it's on those lists it's on the nfi list it's those players it's the Corey lindsley where they have a backup center like will clap stepping in it's also joshua palmer who has recently hit ir for the chargers which means that we're looking at jalen guy and it means that we're looking at rookies like quentin johnston and their tight end position to pick up some of that slack and of course keenan allen who can play pretty much everywhere on that offense really the key for them is on injury reserve not as much so on their injury report because for there they're healthy now on the Lions side there's also a lot of good news for us as well Khalil Dorsey he's healthy he had an in-game injury but he's healthy he's set to play if the Lions need to go that far in depth which they possibly could I mean the Chargers are not afraid of putting a lot of receivers on the field but with them being a little bit banged up I almost anticipate a little bit more heavy personnel in this game would not shock me they also like to play a lot of 12 personnel so it just makes sense that they could utilize more tight ends Dylan Parham Jr., Gerald Everett, lean into a little bit more of that in this game, which I don't know if we're going to see Khalil, Khalil Dorsey defensively, but we definitely could on kick returns. Jonah Jackson is back. That's the key one. It's the offensive line because if we're looking on paper and you're saying, hey, where did the Lions have an advantage? You could point to the interior offensive line of the Lions that's getting healthy versus the interior defensive line of the Chargers. Now, the Chargers have a guy in Otito who is very interesting. He's an interior defensive lineman that hasn't had a ton of snaps this season, but he brings real quickness to that defensive line they also have a former line in Nick Williams in the mix Austin Johnson in the mix Sebastian Joseph Day the former LA Ram they have a really good mix going on in there but it's Agbania that I'm very interested in the defensive tackle out of UCLA that seemingly gave them a little bit of a spark against the New York Jets but continuing with the Lions David Montgomery I'm very excited about this okay if y'all didn't know I'm very excited David Montgomery is finally back you love to see a man full participation throughout the week and I think he's going to be a big part of this game. Now, I know when I say that, some people might take that as, oh, dang, what, are we not going to give Gibbs the ball? No, we should absolutely give Gibbs the ball. But David Montgomery has a very good role in this offense. And I think that this could be the week that makes a lot of sense for David Montgomery to eat in between the tackles. But there's still a very important role for Jameer Gibbs, in my opinion, in this game. And we'll get to that. And I think he could be utilized in both the run game and the pass game. Levi is doubtful, did not participate the last few days with a hip injury. But he's also been a healthy scratch the last two weeks so I don't know if you've been active anyway we got to see Broderick Martin for the first time this season in the regular season against the Las Vegas Raiders that's always an option for the Lions as well Donovan Peoples-Jones he's questionable he's been limited all week with a rib injury it didn't halt the trade the trade went through but the biggest thing there with Peoples-Jones is not only the injury it's also him getting acclimated he had a little bit of extra time but it sounds like a lot of that ramp up was more so this week so we'll have to see where he's at maybe he gets a few spot snaps if he's healthy enough to play I think there's a role that he can help us in this week if he 
is able to play, but we'll talk about that a little bit more here in a second. Frank Ragnow is back. We may end up elevating someone from the practice squad this week with Big V, who is out this week. He is the one player that is listed as out for this week, so Graham Glasgow, expect him to step in at the right guard position, but he's kind of been like a starter for us this season anyway, and he's actually played really well for us, in my opinion, this season. So it's kind of like not losing a starter. You kind of have another starter that you're plugging in. It's more about the depth in that case. And then, of course, Dan Skipper, who's questionable. He would be the guy to keep an eye on because if he doesn't play, Lions could definitely look to elevate someone because he stepped in at guard for us a little bit there. But the point is, both teams are getting healthy. And it's going to make this thing a lot of fun. So with that being said, let's dive into the preview side of things for the Chargers defense and offense and then a score prediction. But we're going to start off first with this Chargers defense, which if you look at them personnel wise, they have talent on all three levels, specifically on the defensive line. It's the edge position. It's Khalil Mack. It's Joey Bosa. It's Tui Tui Pelotu, the rookie out of USC. Those are the three guys that really stand out when you start to look at the defensive roster. But then, of course, they really have it on all three levels. The linebacker position with Eric Kendricks, I think, has really freed up a guy like Kenneth Murray, who every time I watch him, I'm like, man, he looks really good. And Kenneth Murray was a player that there was real questions about because he was a very fast, slowing first round pick, but he could overrun plays. He could be hit and miss. But when I watch him this season, Kenneth Murray looks big time, especially when you look at specific plays like screens and he's shutting down screens for them defensively. Kenneth Murray has played well. And I think Eric Hendricks has helped him a ton playing alongside of him. Another really good linebacker. We know him really well for the Minnesota Vikings. Then you get into the back end. Of course, you have to Derwin James, whose versatility allows him to be so flexible defensively and it's also part of Brandon Staley's scheme but then on top of that at cornerback a young Asante Samuel Jr. who has a ton of talent and then across from them of course a Michael Davis who is going to play in this game but I want to start with the run defense first because statistically speaking if you didn't know they're actually really good against the run they allow 3.7 yards per carry which is sixth in the league 89 yards per game which is sixth in the league and also only 11th in expected points allowed they are a very good run defense statistically speaking However, when you watch them, there are some things that stand out to me. First thing would be the edge defender position. A lot of times we get caught talking about those guys as pass rushers, but I'm really circling those guys against the run. I think those are the players that can shut everything down offensively against the run. Those are the players that I circle, whether that's tight ends, tackles, or if it's movement behind the Lions try to utilize to pull some of those edge defenders out of the play. It's those guys that I circle that the Lions need to find a way to handle them in this game to have success rushing the football. Now, when I look at it personnel-wise, it's a little bit difficult because of who's been healthy, who hasn't been healthy, but with the Lions offensive line being mostly healthy without Big V in this game, but Graham Glasgow stepping in at right guard, I really like the matchup at the point of attack for the Lions rushing the football in this game. And there's a lot of different ways you can approach this team, I think, rushing the football. For example, a team like Minnesota had success rushing against this Chargers team, but they had some players banged up at the edge defender position, and I think that really affected them because I really do think that it starts with that matchup first. But if you're going to lean into more of that outside rushing attack, maybe more of the outside zones, you have to start with those players in particular because even against a good offensive line like the Dallas Cowboys, you could see that you try to attack those players. It can be good. Maybe you can get the edge defender to jump inside and make their cornerbacks tackle. A team that likes to play off coverage in the back end, make those guys get involved. A team that loves to play two deep safety pre-snap and you can get outside the tackle box and have success, especially with a guy like Jameer Gibbs who really came onto the scene this past week. However, if you don't handle those guys, they can absolutely create negatives and they're extremely aggressive which is maybe something the Lions could potentially look to take advantage of so that's the first key that I have for the outside rushing plays outside zone plays keep an eye on it on some of the pin pull looks as well Lions may try to lean into that but with that tied along with the fast scraping linebackers that they have of a Kenneth Murray really the idea there is maybe that you can get them to overflow on a play or also throwing some misdirection looks at those guys as well would be something I would keep an eye on specifically for the linebacker position those those are the keys for me first on the outside rushing, which is why I really like the idea of rushing between the tackles, specifically a lot of the inside rushing attack. Now, a lot of the power run plays, the gap style, I haven't seen a ton of teams from the games that I've watched through four games that the Chargers have played this season. I didn't see a ton of teams kind of lean into that style offensively. It was a lot more of the zone rushing. It's something I'm very curious about in this game, but I'm really curious about is what we can do between the A gaps and somewhat between the B gaps in this game. And to me, that leans me into David Montgomery. And the key for me is this, being consistent 
on early downs. It's not necessarily about having to hit the big explosive plays over and over and over. We may get the occasional explosive play, in my opinion, in this game, getting outside the tackle box, running a toss play, maybe mixing a jet sweep in. But more so, it's about getting the four yards on first down because this is one of the best third down defenses in football. And for them, with all the movement that they like to do post-snap, and they're a pretty much a middling blitzing defense in terms of blitz rate, where they can get very versatile and flexible is when they can get you in a third down spot. So they'll play a lot of zone coverage. They'll start to mix in the blitzes. They'll start to drop out defensive linemen. And that's where things can get very difficult as they are one of the best defenses, sixth best in the league in conversion rate allowed on third down. So I think for me, it does come back to what can we do running the football? And you look at it statistically, they're very good. Now, not a lot of their interior guys really grade out that well, but I do think that they're better than maybe what the grades stand on. We start with Agbania. He is the player that I'm circling in this game because we haven't seen a ton of him, but when you watch him, you see the quickness. Big issue there is keeping his pad level low, and I think we could have very much so success with some of the combo blocks on the interior, but players like that are guys that I circled. Now, they have Nick Williams who will play at the nose tackle position. So here you get the New York Jets utilizing two tight ends to, again, handle that edge defender. You see some movement there on Agbania at the point of attack, getting up to the second level here for Brees Hall. And I think we could see a lot of that inside rushing attack in this game. Next player, you're going to see Sebastian Joseph Day, number 51 here, working on that right guard. A little bit more of a squatty type of defender. They have a nice rotation. I think what's kind of underrated about this defensive front is what those guys can do in terms of pass rush. Even Nick Williams has gotten some real pass rush this season. All the focus to the edge rushers, but those guys can get pressure on early down. So I expect us to win this battle, but it is a battle that we need to prove that we can win. That being said, we do have Decker and Sewell, our top investments there on the offensive line. The Lions could come out and say, hey, we should be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe and attack with those guys. But as you can see here, if you don't get that movement on the interior, they're fast to scrape and they're fast to fill as defensive backs, and they can create negatives. This is a really good opportunity for David Montgomery. Now, obviously, Jameer Gibbs has to get his touches, and I think he will mix those touches in in the run game. He absolutely should. But to me, I think strength-wise, it makes sense to try to attack this team team to between the tackles in a couple of ways first off inside zone rushing I also really like the idea of some of the trap plays specifically maybe some whams mixed in as well with tight end usage allowing their defensive line to get upfield and shooting up to these linebackers because to me tied along with the edge defenders being very dominant at the point of attack Khalil Mack Tooley has been huge here and now Joey Bosa who is healthy for them defensively along with that where they can consistently get negatives it's how fast these linebackers play downhill so for me I love mixing in some misdirection looks that way you can hopefully get them to pause and get some open lanes but also utilizing our tight ends to go from a tight end alignment to shoot inside the tackle box and get up to these linebackers I think the traps the whams could be very accessible for the Lions in this game to try to get maybe some of their explosive run plays there I really like attacking with some of the inside runs in this game I think matchup wise personnel rise this is where the Lions have to look Look at it and say, hey, look, we think we're one of the best offensive lines in football. This is a game where we get that movement. I really like the rotation they have on the interior. I don't think they have maybe any standout players, but they have a nice rotation. Here you can see Joseph Day, 51, as well as Agbani and some of the quickness who really showed up against the Jets here as the other defensive tackle on this play who kind of leans on that quickness. But of course, the opposite side of this as well with some of the outside runs, the Lions try to lean into that. You could look at it and say, hey, we have Sewell, we have Decker. So we understand that you got two dogs out there or three dogs on the edge but those are our top two guys really on this offense line and Decker's coming off a really strong week they could definitely attempt to go at that early and see how they handle that matchup but with that being said Thule is really the guy I circle against to run I think you can have some success against Khalil Mack but Thule is the guy that has been a difference maker when he's out there against the run and to be honest we're coming off a Raiders game where we were able to get a lot of that movement from guys like Taylor Decker those guys were getting pushed to tackles to guards I'm looking at centers to guards in this game creating combo blocks winning on their nose tackles, getting movement, and being able to win that way by being able to stay on top of the chains and just consistently go forward, which can allow our offense to stay very opened up. It's been a key for us this season, passing on early downs with heavy personnel, being able to live in what the defense is able to do. I want to jump in here and talk a little bit about our partnership for this season with BetUS, a leading online betting platform offering a wide range of sports betting and casino games from the most popular sports, basketball, baseball, of course, football, that's the time right now all the way to esports well known for their security reliability and customer service which i had a great experience with firsthand them reaching out to me because they didn't want me to miss out on a deal 
once I signed up. And it's very easy to sign up. Use that top link in the description. You deposit at least $100, you can get a 125% match. You click that link, it'll take you to a page where you click bet now, and in three pages, you can be signed up with BetUS. There's also tons of different ways to bet with BetUS. Outside of casino games, if you want to go the sportsbook route, you can go to pregame betting, whether that's over-unders, spreads. You can utilize prop bets, which we do shorts on now every week. Some of the game props that I like for each upcoming Lions game, all the way to live betting and parlays, which are just a ton of fun, just to see what kind of crazy idea you can come up with. Features in there, which I really like, like for example, the props builder, where you can build out a prop with a specific player. Maybe you think Khalif Raymond's going to have a big day. You can build out a player prop for that player, whether that's receptions or yards, maybe it's touchdowns. So have tons of different ongoing promotions available right now, whether you're a new customer or you're a existing customer that's just re-upping with BetUS. There's tons of different promotions that are available right now. My favorite parts of BetUS is their loyalty program. If you place wagers on BetUS, you can work your way up tiers on BetUS, earning different rewards such as bigger bonuses or welcome free play or free payouts and utilize that top link in the description i know a lot of you guys already bet during the nfl season so if you want to follow along with the shorts that i make and maybe some of the bets that i like for the week click that top link sign up with BetUS. at very least you don't even need to deposit money right away you can just look around just see what's kind of out there just take a look at the website but it's definitely worth doing especially if you're already betting again if you have any questions like customer service issues they have an faq on their website that you can go to or you can get into contact with them utilizing live chat email email, and phone support. So again, shout out to BetUS for supporting this channel, our partner for the NFL season, and let's get back to the video. Creatively, and for us, I think it's going to be coming back to staying on top of the chains, and I think a lot of that can come from some of the inside rushing attack, mix in some misdirections, and also maybe try to get outside occasionally, specifically because of how their cornerbacks play. If you make their cornerbacks tackle, if you can get around those edge defenders, maybe some pin pull looks, maybe Cleo Mack just steps inside like he did here against the Vikings, maybe some of those looks to make those corner backs tackle their safeties are pretty aggressive coverage wise they play too high but they rush down into the box so maybe you can get some of those one-on-ones and that's where I circle Montgomery and say he can do a little bit after contact between the tackles and I think he's really suited well for this game to have success but Gibbs should absolutely be utilized at change of pace aggressiveness of their defense that's where Gibbs to me can take advantage and possibly get some explosives towards the outside like here you can see the aggressiveness Nick Williams handles that a gap as a nose tackle pretty well but then Murray fills the defensive backfields and you can see the edge rusher playing through the tight end allows a bounce out lane for the running back and he's able to take off we know Gibbs when he gets outside the tackle box has ridiculous quickness not only in the pass game but to potentially try to give him some hitters towards the outside but I really like David Montgomery in this game also you have to keep an eye out for their slot or cornerback blitzing specifically on a single receiver side or if they're in kind of a slot slash tight end alignment if you have a receiver there you have to keep an eye on the bringing defensive backs off the edge to blitz and then allow them to slant and again be aggressive upfield and try to shut down and create some negative plays in the run game to so them pass defense wise they're not as good here statistically they're actually more towards the bottom of the league 96.6 pass rating allowed that's 24th also allowing 68 percent completion percentage that's 22nd in the league and 12 touchdowns to six interceptions which isn't bad two to one ratio that's not bad but pass defense wise it's a very interesting team because they are more zone heavy in the nfl they're a top 10 zone rate team in the nfl this season pushing 80 percent of the time they're in zone coverage and when i watch them defensively i think there's a couple zone coverages that they like to kind of live in first off cover six and i actually do think one of the problems they can have defensively is that they can be a little bit predictable and that's one thing again the lions have taken advantage of this season passing on early downs allowing the defense to be a little bit more predictable with their looks not get as crafty in the back end with so much movement and it's allowed the lions to have success stay ahead of the chains in that way and in this game i do think that there's times where i'm watching them specifically against the jets where you can pick out what kind of coverage they're starting to lean into obviously their safeties will roll post snap and a lot of that versatility is starts with derwin james this example here against chicago they go into a tampa two look and if you notice on the play it rolls down into that deep middle roll and they end up getting an interception here against chicago the out route was open on the play but this is a completely inverted look from the defense and it's a confusing look from the defense and that's why i think they're so tricky on third down because they can do things like this and they love to live in zone coverage so they're not one of those teams that will always play man when it's third and five they'll play cover three they'll bring a blitz they'll drop out 
well. They'll play zone on third down. That's why you need to find a way to stay ahead of the chains. And in this game, for me, one of the coverages they like to lean into is cover six. So there's a couple of things that I will look into in this game. First off, putting speed in the slot. If the Lions look to go and spread out this defense a little bit, putting speed into the slot can force them to carry routes vertically because they don't want to create a two-on-one with the safety on that cover two side. So you can create high-low looks with Jameer Gibbs, and this is where I'll get to it a little bit more in a second with Jameer Gibbs in the passing game. You could give him some looks there, of course, creating some of those high-low looks. And then on the cover four side, which a lot of times they play to the boundary, the shorter side of the field, that's where you could potentially get some one-on-ones with a tight end, with a Sam Laporta underneath, with a linebacker one-on-one. If you watch this Chargers defense, they love to use defensive backs to match up with tight ends. All right, They a lot of times won't match your personnel linebacker for tight end if they feel like your tight end is a receiving threat. A lot of times they'll just put extra defensive backs into the game, which one, again, points back to you want to be able to run the football, and I think a guy like Montgomery who can make things happen after contact could be very successful in this game because they're going to have some lighter personnel in the box to try to stop the run. It's an opportunity to create some one-on-ones with linebackers underneath, which is not something that they love to do, and you really see that show up when they're in man coverage defensively. But sticking a little bit more to this coverage, also I anticipate a lot of switch releases from the Lions on the outside. One, they could push guys vertical to try to clear players out. So this would be an example of Kansas City attacking the coverage defensively. You can see on that cover two side on the bottom of the screen here, they're going to push their slot vertical, which is going to open up a zone hole underneath by taking away one of their underneath zone defenders. They also create a high low here on the bottom against that outside corner with the running back swinging into the flat. Now on this next play, you can see the motion across here, and they're going to get them to dictate coverage, safety rolls down. We know Ben Johnson will utilize that. Now there is a little bit of a breakdown here in man coverage on who has who and the tight ends wide open, but that is something that does pop up when you watch their defense. And then the last aspect would be attacking the middle of the field. And a big part is just zone coverage in general for this defense is attacking the middle of the field. And this is where I feel like one of the players to watch in this game has to be a guy like Sam Laporta. Now, defensively, they may put more attention to Sam Laporta and make sure that he's not the guy that can go crazy. Attention will end up going to St. Brown. So I'm going to talk about a coverage that I think we could see a lot in this game in a second. But I look for Sam Laporta statistically to be in line for a very big game. I think that's very possible for First off, this is a team that allows most of the production in the NFL to tight ends. They allow over six receptions per game to tight ends. Uh, they allow the second most passing yards per game to tight ends. I think Sam Laporta is in line for a big game, and I would keep an eye on some potential big plays trying to be set up through play action here. Maybe some leak routes from the tight end like a Brock Wright, trying to hide tight ends in line and get them vertical. I could absolutely see the Lions trying to get one shot played to a tight end in this game, and maybe the tight end that you're not expecting, like a Brock Wright or, of course, a Sam Laporta in this game. I think our tight end's in for a very big game. He's a player to watch for me offensively in this one. A one coverage that they could lean a little bit heavier into in this game as a zone-heavy team is more of those cover three looks. One, they have versatility. They can play cl cloud, cloud cover three because of Derwin James' ability to play as a deep third. So they could absolutely lean into that a little bit more like a team like Baltimore did if they look back at that game and say, we really want to try to take away the middle of the field, leaving one one-on-ones on the outside, which I don't think they have the best corners in the league. I think a Asante Samuel is a pretty darn good corner, but I like the matchup if it's Asante Samuel in a one-on-one, -on -one, whether this is man or a cover three look. I like us trying to get some speed on Samuel. I think for him, he allows a lot of routes to happen in front of his face. So a lot of those, you know, deep curl routes with some quickness, maybe that's Khalif, maybe that's Jamison. I look at some speed being able to be effective matched up against Samuel. And then you flip it over to Michael Davis. I think Michael Davis is actually not bad. His stats are bad on the season. He's allowing a 110 pass rating. However, I don't think he's terrible. He's not not terrible in press either, but he's definitely a guy that you would have to look to attack on the outside, specifically if we can get a matchup like Josh Reynolds on a guy like Michael Davis. I think that's where you could have success because a lot of times they'll isolate his matchup. Stylistically, a guy like Josh Reynolds could have a lot of success in this game against a player like Michael Davis. Now, this is also a defense where I think the running back can be very impactful in the receiving game. We're going to talk a little bit more about man coverage here in a second and Jameer Gibbs later in the video, but this would be an example. You go 11 personnel offensively in kind of this bunch look towards the top of formation and what ends up happening is the safety wants to come down because they're in 11 personnel and man up the tight end that leaves the linebacker on the running back and then you run that little motion and you can throw him that screen bubble and kind of like the Raiders game you can create some space or here for example you go three by one the safety is actually going to man up here with the running back on this play now if the linebacker does then you want to like that matchup but the safety because they play two eye safeties has a lot of ground to cover in every game I've watched I've seen plays like this quick hitters 
Gibbs in the flat. And if you get Gibbs one on one in space, you like that matchup. What's interesting, we talked a little bit about third down and how they how good they are on third down. If you move over to the man coverage side of things, because there's a real shot that as a zone heavy team, they come into this one saying, hey, we're going to lean man heavy because the Lions have and, and the past shown inconsistency beating man coverage, specifically just personnel wise. Now, creatively, create, creatively, we can usually get guys open, but personnel wise, we can have some hit and miss results. Now, we're healthy right now, which is a big aspect for us. One thing that I think is very interesting by them on third down, especially if they do go to man, is they like to put, if your big threat is on the outside, they feel like you have a threatening receiver on the outside, maybe that's St. Brown, maybe that's Josh, they'll put Michael Davis on that best threat and they'll put a safety over top. It's an interesting approach. The Patriots have done it in the past and then they'll leave Samuel one-on-one -on, -one on the opposite side. But it's just something to keep in mind in this game. Though I feel like our biggest threat, if they're going to specifically try to plan to take that away coverage-wise, is going to be St. Brown lining up in the slot. So cover three, I could absolutely see them leaning into that. And if they do lean into more man, look at that matchup directly. They're probably going to want to drop out linebackers or utilize safeties to try to bracket in St. Brown, which is just then, okay, who else can win one-on-one? -on -one? There's a few staples that you have to keep an eye out for in this game. First one would be running some of the receiver quick routes where they literally just stand and look back at the quarterback. Not necessarily a screen, but some receiver quicks. Why? They like to play off coverage defensively, especially if they're going to lean into zone, but even in man coverage, they'll play off coverage specifically towards the towards the field side. Teams have done that. Also, keep an eye on RPO looks. Now, we understand golf's not like a running type of quarterback, so not necessarily the read as much as the RPO. Shotgun runs, pull it down, potentially get a quick hitter against some of that off coverage on the outside and with their aggressive linebacker and safety play downhill. I would keep an eye on some looks like that as well on the outside. And of course, as always, screens. Now, it's a little bit different. In man coverage, Kenneth Murray has been a complete screen stopper. He's been excellent there, but receiver screens, tunnel screens, or if they're in zone coverage, maybe you can mix in some running back screens. Everybody seems to do it, but Kenneth Murray has been very good at taking those away, so it could be a challenge. The big thing to set up those is a lot of movement behind the line of scrimmage, specifically pre-snap to get them to switch matchups. That's where you can cause some confusion, cause some breakdown if they are going to lean in man coverage and set up screens that way with, for example, like a loop motion to shift the matchup. Linebacker has this guy snapping the ball and then getting the running back to football. That way their matchups aren't as clear and there's a little bit of processing pre-snap. For all the matchup I have to like there is Taylor matched up with St. Brown, a young player out of Wake Forest. However, I don't think it's the best matchup and I do think St. Brown, against most matchups, I'd take him to win that. I do think we have an advantage there on paper if we can get that matchup, specifically if they try to get leave that one-on-one. -on -one. So for me, I think offensively, there's a lot of things that we do well that actually play into what maybe the Chargers can give up a little bit defensively. Chargers are allowing the second highest explosive pass rate in zone coverage. I think the Lions are very good in zone coverage. If they lean into that, expect, of course, St. Brown, but I'm going to assume they're going to try to lean to take him away in zone coverage. So you're going to have to look at everybody else. And that's where Sam Laporta, to me, is in line for a massive game if they lean into zone as they usually do. But again, and they could flip it up say we're going to try to go more man heavy in this game and if that is the case I look at those outside receivers and then I just look at who can win the matchups and to me I think we do have matchups that we can win and a lot of those quick hitters to again kind of like the run game stay on top of the chains get the ball out of your hands keep that completion percentage up and pick up those little chunks and just keep moving the ball forward another reason it's important to stay on top of the chains and the Lions like to go empty spread it out pass ball and early downs because a lot of times defenses won't go crazy maybe to adjusting to one player maybe it'll just sit in a basic cover to try to adjust to a player. Here's CD Lambs in that inside slot. You see they drop out Khalil Mack, but also the linebacker is going to pass off when it goes past him vertically to the cornerback. And of course, the middle of the field then opens up. And I think that's where the Lions like to live. I know that's where the Lions like to live, and I think they'll be able to in this game the Lions match up really well as a pass offense against this pass defense for what they'd like to do and also player for player. The big key, of course, comes back to the pass rush, and it has to. That's where they have all their big names. That's why you need to stay out of the change. That's why you don't want to get into third and 12 because not only do their pass rushers pin their ears back, but they also, at that point, can put more of them on the field and they'll start to mix in a lot of the blitzing looks. So you don't want to get into third and long against this team for that reason. I think we have an absolute ability to stay on top of the chains in this game but that's a really big key. One thing they love to do is give you three by, really three by two looks as a pass rusher unit, meaning they'll put three pass rushers on three offensive linemen on one side of the field. Left tackle, left guard, center's got to handle those. And they'll spread them wide. So when they snap it, they'll, the offensive line on one side of the field will have, to, will have to open up wide. Then they'll utilize a linebacker plus an opposite side rusher, and they'll be able to create loops and stunts. They'll really test your guard play and your center play. Now, I'm pretty optimistic that with Frank Ragnar, Jonah Jackson, Graham Glasgow back. We have, we, 
hopefully have the pieces to be pretty good in that matchup. But that's where they can get creative and create some free rushers. So, again, you want to stay on top of the chains. I think the Lions had the passing game to do it. And if they tried to lean into passing the ball early on downs to do that, would not completely shock me. But that's another reason I think Montgomery makes a lot of sense for this game. Now, you flip it over to the other side of the ball. How about the Chargers offensively? Speaking, the Chargers average 3.9 yards per carry. It's below league average. It's 21st. 101 yards per game. That's also 21st. And 19th in expected points added but what makes them difficult is who they have running the football specifically Austin Eckler now they also have Joshua Kelly who's a pretty nice back as well but it's Austin Eckler who is a big time threat why not because their offensive line is great across the board Rashawn Slater Zion Johnson young Zion Johnson will clap at center Salier at right guard the former Georgia offensive tackle that's kicked in the right guard and also Trey Pipkins at right tackle it's not a great offensive line across the board it's not the most dominant offensive line but what makes them difficult is what they do schematically tied along with the back that they have they utilize tight ends and motion tight ends they'll utilize them at the snap they'll shoot them inside the offensive line to try to create cutback lanes but then also you have to point to the motion they utilize if you're in zone defensively trying to get defensive backs take defensive backs help and run support and run at those guys a lot of times I think we can have success at the point of attack that's key one but I think on paper we will have success at the point of attack winning there it starts with nose tackles first specifically against some of the inside zone looks that they try to utilize because they'll try to crash down a lot of times guards and centers to try to move nose tackles out of the play to create run lanes so it's going to start with Benito Isaiah Bugs, maybe even Broderick Martin again in this game handling business there first and maybe we use Broderick to try to help us a little bit against some of those cutback runs maybe a little bit similarly which is really good practice to a guy like Josh Jacobs who loves to do that as well but this team I don't think is going to consistently dominate us at the point of attack they shouldn't so a lot of it comes back to what does Eckler do off schedule in terms of the immediate cutback lanes that's where he becomes a threat to me the key is slot cornerbacks cornerbacks being effective as run defenders and as well as safeties especially for in two deep looks they love to attack two deep safety looks running the football and getting some of those cutback lanes so to me whoever those guys are it's the defensive backs in general that need to show up and run support positive there Brian Branch I know he will I know our cornerbacks will tackle and I know our safeties are aggressive enough to go step down and tackle as well so again I think our personal matches up why well for what's going to be asked upon them but it's going to be a threat all game long is what he can do there not as much where the initial run is supposed to go in my opinion now it usually comes back to this but this is another game where the Lions interior defensive line really does need to win the battle and I think they definitely can Broder could help us a little bit in this game as well as you see here with some of the heavy personnel looks multiple tight ends and offensive linemen at fullback but this is a heavy outside zone team and these guards Salier and also having Zion Johnson a lot of power they can create a lot of movement at the point of attack but I would also circle the edge defenders to not look over those guys because they could serve a really big impact at the point of attack and help create negatives. Would circle Lee McNeil because of his quickness he could cause some problems especially when he's at a three technique against guys like Salier some of the bigger offensive linemen that they have I would just keep an eye on Lee McNeil's quickness specifically off the backside okay because while they do mix in some inside zone rushing a lot of the plays that I marked down were out outside zone attacks okay flowing one way b c gap that kind of deal outside zone which sets up a lot of cutback lanes a lot of split zone looks but also it makes that backside defensive tackle whether that's the nose tackle or it's a guy like Aleem, to be able to get upfield and help us out there and not get caught behind a mix and open up easy cutback lanes for the running back so the quickness of a guy like Aleem, i think Aleem's in line to have a massive game versus the run but also against the pass i think Aleem mcneil is a player you have to circle at the run game, they love to utilize heavy personnel. Multiple tight ends, offensive linemen will play as their fullback, and I would assume again, that's going to be the case in this game. I think 39% of the time, they use 12 personnel, which is two tight ends and one back. Wouldn't be surprised if they lean into that with some of the receiver injuries that they have and try to find matchups in the pass game with their tight ends, but specifically with the run game. So they'll utilize the heavy personnel, which is again, why defensive backs have to help us against the run. The other key for me would then be the edge defenders. One, at the point of attack. Why? Their tackle or so their tight ends whether that's a split zone or it's a double team by their tight ends their tight ends set up a lot of their run success so those edge defenders have to be really good and they'll mix in some jet sweeps as well which is something to always keep an eye on with some of the movement they have maybe even more so this week with a guy like Darius Davis who will line up in the backfield to put a lot of different players in the backfield and some of the speed they have the edge rushers become important for contain against the run for the passing side of things this one I'm really curious to see what the Lions game plan is in this game Lions are pretty much middling in 
in the league in terms of man versus zone rates. But again, zone rates are way more higher by teams. So Lions still play zone over 70% of the time. But I'm very curious because of not having Joshua Palmer, who has seemingly been like their number two option, specifically against man coverage this season, not having Joshua Palmer, I'm very curious to see who the next guy is that steps up. Keaton Allen is the first guy, almost like Mark Andrews with the Ravens. Keaton Allen's the first guy you have to circle. The problem with Keenan Allen is they move him so he doesn't just sit in the slot. It's not always going to be Brian Branch. You're going to get him on the outside. You're going to have him in movement. If you're playing man coverage defensively, pretty nice job of getting him open, utilizing bunch looks, putting him in the inside slot, rubbing routes. They do a pretty nice job of creating openings against man coverage there. So while I do think personnel wise, this could be a game where the Lions could sit back and say, you know what? Maybe we lean a little bit more man heavy again in this week because of who's out in this one. The movement with Keenan Allen makes it difficult. They'll put him at running back when they get into the red zone. After Keenan Allen, because they don't have Palmer in this game, the next player I would actually circle is not Quentin Johnston. It's the tight end position. It's how the Lions match up with their tight ends, Gerald Everett and Dylan Parham, specifically in the red zone because they're very threatening there, but really everywhere on the field. If the Lions lean into man, trust me, those are going to be the guys that this offense is going to look to try to go at in this game. So that's going to be the Tracy Walkers, Kirby Joseph. If we try to put our linebackers on them, which they'll probably love that, the tight end usage is probably their second option on this team. So it's handling that. And then after that, it'd be a guy like Quentin Johnston, who usually runs a more vertical route tree, you know, deep posts, comeback routes, deep curl routes. He'll do some things underneath, but he's more of a vertical threat. I think a guy like Cam Sutton could match up really well with Quentin Johnston in this game. Of course, the side advantage would go heavily towards Quentin Johnston at six foot four, two fifteen. But I think Cam Sutton has shown really well against some of those vertical threats offensively. Then a guy like Jalen Guyton, who's probably going to step into that next outside receiver role for this game, hasn't really had any production this season. But I like a guy like Jerry Jacobs. I think he struggles a little bit at the top of the route, separating a top route consistently. And I think a guy like Jerry Jacobs, when he's lined on the outside, could have a lot of success in that matchup, sticking with him at the top of the route. And then finally, Austin Eckler. Austin Eckler is weird because he's crafty on broken plays. That's where he becomes a problem is broken plays. If they can get him one-on-one -on -one with a linebacker, they'll go out of the run angle routes. Now we talk about disguising looks defensively. One of the places I like to do that is situationally on a third down, specifically if you're going to play man coverage against this offense by showing who is blitzing and who's not blitzing and trying to disguise who's actually matched up on who. Because one thing I did notice with Herbert, there's a lot of things to like, and I think he gets the ball out when he does feel the blitz, but he does tend to not pull the trigger or sometimes not even recognize maybe where to go with the ball quickly enough if he doesn't know who's rushing and who's not rushing. It screens. It's what he can do when things break down. And Justin Herbert, I would say one of the keys for them offensively is making sure that Herbert doesn't run wild. That's something that he has capability to do. So we always talk about pass rush lanes. That'll be... A must again in this one. I would expect to see some TE stunts where the tackles with their quickness against these guards can hopefully open up our edge rushers to collapse inside and create pressure that way. That way we can also maintain our pass rush lanes. But that is going to be a key keeping him within the pocket. I thought Kansas City did a pretty nice job of really focusing on we have to keep him in the pocket because Herbert off schedule, not even just what he does with legs, it also makes Austin Eckler kind of light up within their passing game and he starts to become a big time threat. Different teams seem to have their own kind of method of how they try to attack this Chargers offense. You know, the Bears started to lean into a lot of cover three defensively, which I think is an interesting option in this game. But with the team that most recently played them, the New York Jets, who played a lot of quarters coverage, and historically we've seen some hit and miss results from a guy like Herbert against quarters coverage. Very curious to see if the Lions try to lean into that. Now, if they do, the key, of course, is going to be stopping the run without having a safety consistently in the box. That's going to be a, a thing that we have to keep an eye on. But if we're in quarters, we could play aggressive with our safeties. They don't have to be at a super deep depth. They don't have to think over Overall in this one, the Lions may feel more willing to go one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, which could open up like a cover three look. Now, cover four would definitely stress the safeties, but it could potentially help them protecting some of the seams against the tight end usage probably in this game. The downside is zone coverage. You're giving middle field looks to guys like Keenan Allen, but he's pretty much good against zone or man, so it doesn't really they lean matter. into something like cover three a little bit heavier, try to go one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, consistently get a safety down into the box. That would make sense. Kind of think about the strategy against the Ravens. I know it didn't go well, but something like that would make a lot of sense, I think, in this game for the Lions. And they could shift into saying, we want to play some man coverage. I think you absolutely can in this game. Now, who do I think is the players to watch? It's the defensive line, no question. Why? One, obviously the run game, especially if you want to keep a second safety deep. But more so, it's what they do pass rushing. 
I need to see them get pressure. They need to contain Justin Herbert. And also, even when they're not getting to the quarterback, one thing that I've noticed with Herbert, he's pretty good at picking up, getting the ball to his hands on blitz plays, on blitz reads. But more so, it's him not pulling the trigger when a defensive tackle can get penetration on the pocket and get their hands up in passing lanes. He'll pull down a lot of passes like that, and you can force him into a second read if you can get push on the interior without allowing him an easy escape plan. I would absolutely keep an eye on the defensive line. I think Ali McNeil could be in line for a massive game but really everybody on that front I think is a key those are the players to watch is what the defensive line can do run game and pass game and I think they should have success in this game I think Lee McNeil is going to be in line for a back-to-back big time game because I think he matches up well with their guards in this one for all my players to watch in this one offensively first off it's David Montgomery secondly is Sam Laporta I would love to see Pupils Jones because I think he can have a role on some of those deep curls deep out routes really threaten some of those off coverage looks and then some of those quick looks as well and I think our outside receivers this is one of those times where I could say well hey if we're going to win on the outside this is a game where you can win on the outside and in the zone coverage defensively I think Laporte is in for a massive game because attention to me will go to St. Brown and Laporte will be able to aid up the middle of the field where they've had inconsistencies covering up tight ends especially when you overload the field if they lean into man coverage outside receivers I think can really win here and that would be a big part of having a guy like Donovan Peoples-Jones back for some of those deep curl routes specifically if you get like a third and long spot and they try to play man and coverage but overall I think again we have the pieces to do it with quickness and speed like a Khalif Raymond on a guy like Asante Samuel and then a guy like Michael Davis Josh Reynolds been very good against man coverage I would look to him Montgomery in the run game now I will say this Jameer Gibbs because I know he just had a big time game Jameer Gibbs could absolutely have a ton of success in this game catching the football maybe not with like the 20 yard big plays that he puts up in the passing game but a lot of what he can be underneath of this first play I just like this play Play by the Bears offense line. The movement they get here on Johnson. You can see the left guard. We saw Kansas City at times have some success here. Of course, Minnesota as well. Weak side zone rushing to get some movement. But one thing that I would keep in mind as I keep looking back, the Kansas City Lions game made me think that Jameer Gibbs could potentially be a real X factor in this game. With David Montgomery back, utilizing a player like Gibbs in the slot could be really effective. Now, of course, we have Khalif. He's been a big time zone beater too. But Jameer Gibbs' capability, not only as a spot, maybe he can get some outside runs in this game but what he could be as a passing threat some of these jet motions maybe he doesn't get the football but he can threaten you underneath against some of their coverage create high lows if they want to play back off coverage get in the ball underneath let him go to work let him eat up receptions now here's a sweep so he's able to get outside and you can see some at speed and i think he can be utilized at times in this game there as well on sunday to have explosive runs but i think he could really eat up a lot of receptions you could put him in a slot in this game because if the attention is focused towards st brown and we've seen this against the Raiders on third down. Goff went to Jameer Gibbs. He sat down, picked up a first down, a nice hot read for him. If they focus their attention on St. Brown or, you know, they have a guy like Derwin James manned up with Laporta and then they throw attention to St. Brown on the play, a guy like Jameer Gibbs could be that other option that can win between the numbers and open up the middle of the field and underneath for the Lions. Amir Gibbs could have a ton of success because they love to play two deep safeties. He can eat up receptions in this game. Now, if it's zone coverage, again, I think middle of the field, we can exploit it. We have a lot of success there historically. I think Sam Laporta could be in line for a very big game. St. Brown's continuously really good against zone coverage as well. But against man, outside receivers, it's great. But Jameer Gibbs, I think, can have a ton of success just with the quick swing route, five yards, screen route, five yards, creating some of those fast motion looks. Kansas City utilized it really well. I would look at what they did offensively and say, hey, we can have success there because our biggest weapons offensively, you could argue, are our tight end and our back. And if you look at Kansas City, it's kind of the same thing if they throw a ton of attention at St. Brown in this game. So to me, I think Jameer Gibbs could rack up a ton of receptions, but Montgomery could eat in the run game. And defensively, I'm circling Brian Branch because he'll see the most Keenan Allen to me probably in this game. Also, the run support has to be on, on, on par, as well as Ali McNeil, I think, is in line for a big game. I'm a confident prediction in this one. I'm a confident prediction coming off a of bye week. I think it's going to be the time they need. I think they're getting healthy. I think this is the game where you step back and you show, hey, our offensive line of strength will show me. This is a game where you show everybody. You want to say that your offensive line of strength, this is where you show that. And I think we have the pieces to match up offensively and defensively in this game to what they do well. I'm going to take the Lions 24-17 on the road, a confident win, and the Lions move to 7-2. and two. Of course, then we head into a lot of this divisional play. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. What's the score? As always, guys. 
got to give a shout out to BetUS. You can use that top link in the description or go to betus.com slash dose of Dion. And if you deposit at least $100 using that link or going to that website, you can get a 125% deposit match. Now, I also need to say, I don't know if y'all noticed or not, the Lions are favored by three currently as of right now on BetUS in this Chargers game. I think a week ago, it was Chargers minus one. So it's very interesting that now the Lions are favored by three. They're seeing us get healthy. So if you're interested in that, go check out BetUS. Soon I'm going to be posting my props for this weekend's game against the Chargers. So stay tuned for that. But until then, thank you for watching and I'm out.